Joseph Babinski, a neurologist, first described the Babinski reflex in 1899. It has been implemented into the routine neurological evaluation since then. Without specialized apparatus, the Babinski reflex is simple to elicit. Because it is a reflex, it does not necessitate active patient participation and can thus be done on individuals who are unable to assist with the neurological exam otherwise. The Babinski reflex test is described in this activity, as well as how to interpret the results. First of all, let's start with the basic anatomy. The Babinski reflex evaluates the corticospinal tract's integrity. The CST is a descending fiber tract that runs from the cerebral cortex to the brainstem and then to the spinal cord. The CST fibers connect with the alpha motor neuron in the spinal cord and aid with motor function direction. The upper motor neuron is the CST, while the lower motor neuron is the alpha motor neuron. The primary motor cortex, premotor regions, and supplementary motor areas account for 60% of CST fibers. Primary sensory areas, the parietal cortex, and the operculum contribute to the rest. Damage anywhere along the CST can result in the presence of a Babinski sign. What are indications to elicit Babinski reflex? The Babinski reflex is used to determine the integrity of the CST as part of a standard neurological test. The presence of a Babinski sign indicates that the CST has been damaged. Lesions of the central nervous system frequently damage the integrity of the CST fiber tracts because they flow from the brain, through the brainstem, and into the spinal cord. As a result, the presence or absence of the Babinski reflex can provide important information about the presence or absence of CNS pathology. The Babinski reflex is particularly essential when there is a suspicion of a spinal cord injury or a stroke, as it can be an early indicator of the presence of these life-threatening illnesses. Equipment required to perform procedure the Babinski reflex should be elicited by a dull, blunt instrument that does not cause pain or injury. Sharp objects should be avoided. The dull point of a reflex hammer, a tongue depressor, or the edge of a key is often utilized. Pre-procedure considerations, the patient should be at ease and relaxed. It's best to let the patient know that the experience might be a little unpleasant. A mildly uncomfortable sensation as well as a tickling sensation may be felt by patients. Before proceeding, the examiner should confirm that the plantar surface of the foot is clear of any lesions. Technique to use. To test for the Babinski sign, the instrument is run up the lateral plantar side of the foot from the heel to the toes, and across the metatarsal pads to the base of the big toe. Interpreting result, the examiner watches for dorsiflexion or upward movement of the big toe and fanning of the other toes. When this occurs, then the Babinski reflex is present. If the toes deviated downward, then the reflex is absent. If there is no movement, then this is considered a neutral response and has no clinical significance. The presence of the Babinski reflex is indicative of dysfunction of the CST. Oftentimes, the presence of the reflex is the first indication of spinal cord injury after acute trauma. Other means of eliciting the Babinski reflex should be known to healthcare practitioners, especially in patients with a missing toe or a solitary infection. The Hoffman reflex in the upper extremity is thought to be the closest analog to the Babinski sign. They should also be aware of the possibility of misleading results if the procedure is carried out poorly.